Welcome to Goff Square Live. My name is Stuart Jessup and I'm going to be talking to you about the Primary Authority Scheme. The Primary Authority Scheme was brought into force under Part 2 of the Regulatory Enforcement and Sanctions Act 2008, RESA for short, and is complemented by statutory guidance and other non-statutory publicly available guidance. It came into force on the 6th of April 2009 and is now run by the Office of Product Safety and Standards under the Department of Business Energy and Industrial Strategy. The scheme aims to provide for more consistent and coordinated regulatory enforcement by local authorities through a statutory scheme whereby businesses operating more than one local authority area can choose to have a primary authority partnership to improve the consistency of advice and enforcement. Direct and coordinated partnerships. There are two types of primary authority partnership. A partnership with a single business, this is called a direct partnership, and a partnership with an organisation such as trade associations or franchises to provide advice to a group of businesses, this is called a coordinated partnership. Enforcement authorities and non-compliance. An enforcing authority that encounters possible non-compliance by a business should take reasonable steps to establish the whether that business has a primary authority for the relevant function in relation to which the enforcing authority is acting by, for example, checking the primary authority register. Guidance encourages early engagement with the primary authority. Requirement to notify a primary authority of proposed enforcement action. The primary authority scheme provides consistency and assurance to businesses by enabling primary authorities to ensure that enforcement action is not taken, which would be inconsistent with primary authority advice or primary authority advice to local authorities. Where an enforcing authority proposes to take enforcement action against a business that has a direct primary authority for the relevant function in relation to which the enforcing authority is proposing action, it is required to make a notification of the proposed enforcement action to the direct primary authority. This requirement to notify the direct primary authority applies whether or not the business also has a coordinated primary authority, but does not apply in a circumstances where retrospective notification is required or b where the enforcing authority is the primary authority for the business in relation to the relevant function where a business is a member of more than one regulated group and has more than one co-coordinated primary authority with the same partnership function in relation to which the enforcing authority is proposing action. The enforcing authority is required to make its notification to one of these coordinated primary authorities. The notification process arises only where enforcement action is proposed against the business that has a primary authority and is not required where action is proposed against an individual employee of that business. Enforcing authorities will need to be aware that in certain circumstances a business is entitled to make a notification of proposed enforcement action to its primary authority. This is the case only where the business or coordinator has reason to believe that the enforcing authority proposes to take enforcement action and the enforcing authority has failed to notify the proposed enforcement action to the primary authority. Where a primary authority receives such a notification, it will need to satisfy itself that the enforcing authority has failed to notify enforcement action that it proposes to take. Once satisfied, the primary authority is required to notify the enforcing authority not to take the proposed action whilst it is reviewed. In these circumstances, the primary authority may request from the enforcing authority the information that the enforcing authority would have been required to provide as part of its enforcement notification. The enforcing authority should provide information in a timely manner. Any failure to provide such information will be taken into account by the Secretary of State in the event that the primary authority requests an extension to the period of five days, five working days, during which it must usually make its decision. Requirement to give retrospective notification of enforcement action. The requirement to notify proposed enforcement action does not apply where a compliance issue is identified that requires urgent action in order to avoid a significant risk of harm to human health, the environment or the financial interests of consumers. The requirement to notify proposed enforcement action also does not apply where notification would be wholly disproportionate. Enforcement action is defined by the 
Coordination of Regulatory Enforcement Regulations 2017. Any action taken by an enforcing authority in relation to an authorization regime such as licensing, permitting, registration, approval or certification regime will be enforcement action where the action constitutes the imposition of a sanction. Investigative activities are not defined as enforcement actions and do not require notification to the primary authority, although the statutory guidance advises dialogue with the primary authority in any case. The relevant period. When making a notification of proposed enforcement action, an enforcing authority should be aware that the primary authority will usually have up to five working days to consider its response, called the relevant period. The enforcing authority cannot proceed with a proposed action within the relevant period. This period is usually five working days beginning on and including the day after the day on which the notification to the primary authority is made, but may end sooner or be extended. The enforcing authority should be aware that where the primary authority refers that notification to a second primary authority, the relevant period for the second primary authority commences when it receives the referred notification where an enactment limits the period within which an enforcing authority may take enforcement action, the calculation of this time limit should not include a. the period during which a primary authority considers its response to the notification, the relevant period or the relevant periods, b. the referral period or c. the period following a reference to the Secretary of State for determination until that reference is determined. Outcomes of notification the notification of proposed enforcement action to the primary authority may result in one of three outcomes. A. The primary authority directs against the proposed enforcement action. B. The primary authority does not direct against the pros proposed enforcement action. Or C. Where the primary authority is unable to reach a decision, it, it may choose to seek consent to refer the notification to the Secretary of State for determination. The primary authority directs against proposed enforcement action. The notification requirement allows the primary authority to review the proposed enforcement action and decide whether or not it is inconsistent with primary authority advice or primary authority advice to local authorities that it has issued. Where the primary authority decides that the proposed action is inconsistent with its advice, it may direct the enforcing authority not to take the action. Where it directs this, the, the response will usually include a details of the advice with which the proposed enforcement action would be inconsistent, details of how and when the advice was issued, and an explanation of the primary authority's reasons for believing that the proposed enforcement action would be inconsistent with its primary authority advice or primary authority advice to local authorities. Where the primary authority directs against proposed enforcement action, the enforcing authority cannot proceed with the proposed action if, having considered the primary authority's reason for its direction, the enforcing authority considers that the proposed action should be allowed to proceed, then it may apply to the Secretary of State for consent to refer the matter for determination on the basis that a primary authority advice was not correct or the primary authority advice was not properly given by the primary authority or the proposed enforcement action is not inconsistent with the primary authority advice. An application to the Secretary of State by the enforcing authority must be made within 10 working days, starting on and including the day after receipt of the primary authority's direction against the proposed enforcement action. If the Secretary of State does not consent to referral, then the enforcing authority cannot take the proposed enforcement action. Where the primary authority decides that the proposed action is not inconsistent with its advice, then the primary authority is required to take reasonable steps to establish whether the business considers the proposed enforcement action to be inconsistent with the advice of the second primary authority. Where the business indicates that it is relying on the advice of a second primary authority, the first primary authority will refer the notification of proposed enforcement action to that primary authority and will notify the enforcing authority and the business that it has done so. The second primary authority is then required to consider the referred notification. Where the business does not indicate that it is relying on the primary authority advice issued by a second primary authority, the primary authority should notify the enforcing authority that it will not direct against the proposed action. Where the enforcing authority 
is not directed against taking the proposed enforcement action, then the enforcing authority is able to decide whether it still considers it appropriate to proceed with the proposed action. The enforcing authority should take account of any information provided by the primary authority or authorities where it decides to proceed with the proposed action. It must first make a notification to the business of the proposed action. On receiving a notification of the proposed enforcement action, the business may, if it considers that the proposed action is inconsistent with the primary authority advice, to apply, it may apply to the Secretary of State for consent to refer the matter for determination. This application must be made within 10 working days beginning on and including the day after it receives the notification. The enforcing authority cannot proceed with the proposed action within the period known as the referral period of 10 working days, although this period may be extended or shortened. So uh, that ends the um, talk on primary authority. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me by email and I'll do my best to try and get back to you and answer those questions. Thank you very much for joining me for this instalment of Golf Square Live.